Welcome back, folks, to Bad Beat 2 here in Commerce, California, at the Commerce Casino. Yep, three fights down, two to go for the amateur. We haven't even gotten to the pros yet, so let's stop talking. Here are the next two fighters. Now our combatants in a middleweight showdown, Joshua Miller, the caveman, from SoCal Fight Factory 510, 185 pounds, a wrestling background with a BJJ in ground and pound style. And his opponent from Wilmington, California, Fernando Vargas, fighting out a sub-fighter MMA, 5'11". Boxing and jiu-jitsu are his specialty. He has two amateur fights, and he has won them both. And that is one of the differences between these two guys. The caveman Joshua Miller, 0-0 as an amateur. Vargas, 2-0 as an amateur. Undefeated with two more fights. Everything else pretty much identical. Let's get in the cage. Round number one of our fourth fight here of the evening at Bad Beat 2. The caveman Joshua Miller in the red. Fernando Vargas from Subfighter MMA in the blue. And the caveman already clubbing with that right hand. And the clinch right away. Vargas forcing Miller against the cage. Miller turning it around. Miller throwing some knees in there. Yeah, Joshua Miller, the caveman in the red. Again, Vargas in the blue. Middleweight action here underway at Bama Bad Beat. Number two. Scheduled for three two-minute rounds, by the way, in the amateur mixed martial arts under the camo organization. If you're wondering why they're wearing rash guards, that's exactly why. It delineates which fighters are amateur, which fighters are pro. Five pro fights coming up after the amateurs are done. One minute down, one minute to go. Crowd in attendance, plentiful. Happy with what they're seeing so far here tonight, as they are at Bama shows. Vargas pushing Miller up against the cage. Miller throwing some knees in here and there. Vargas more looking for a takedown than anything. Oh, and a left hand by Miller lands. And for a guillotine attempt, standing guillotine. Miller goes down, now dropping into the guard for a guillotine. It looks like Vargas is trapped, but I don't know how tight that guillotine is. Can't tell either. The, the less skin of the back of the neck of Vargas showing the better it is for Miller. You don't want to see the back of the neck with an arm in guillotine. You're seeing a good amount of that back of the neck skin right there. Yeah, that's making me believe that this guillotine is not that tight, trying to cut off the airways and the blood traffic to the brain of Vargas. And Vargas talking to the official in the ring now, so you know he's uh, he's got some wind if he's speaking. And he's out. Now Vargas is on top. Now Miller is going to have to deal with having pulled guard with that guillotine and not close the show. Well, the good thing about a two-minute round is, let's say you start throwing, you know, you jump for a guillotine with a minute left, you don't get it, you're only on your back for a couple seconds at the end. And they get two-minute rounds, go for him. Miller looking for an arm in guillotine here. He's got it standing, and then you see where he, he pulls guard and goes down and closes it up, but does not finish the fight. You saw the referee raise his hand in a fist. He was not making a political statement. He was saying that is a catch, that is a near submission. Uh, and likely with the, the turning point for that round, that's really all we saw in that round that can really make a, uh, a clear case for any sort of winner. Second round of action, get ready underway. Three two-minute rounds. Miller in the red, Vargas in the blue. Good leg kick by Vargas to start things off. Both guys also have really thick legs, too. They've been doing their Pilates, I can tell. Yeah, definitely Pilates. <laughs> I initially thought Pilates was a dessert. <laughs> like tiram delicious. Like tiramisu. Big right hand, left hands were being flung by Joshua Miller. He's seeing where the caveman name come from. He's the cage man tonight, pushing Vargas up against the cage. Uh, I don't know if he's looking to throw some knees here, possibly going for another takedown attempt. Body shots. Yeah, Joshua Miller taking advantage of the open torso of Fernando Vargas. Very underrated strike in mixed martial arts. A good old-fashioned body shot. Yeah, well, just like in boxing, it'll take a lot of the wind out of the sails, too, if you work that area. A trip attempt by Miller kind of goes nowhere. Halfway through round number two, halfway through the whole fight. Scheduled for three two-minute rounds. Body lock. This is a good place for Vargas. Gets Final it up, minute. starts punching. Excuse me, Ron. No, no, it's okay. Final minute of the round. Miller pressed up against the cage. Vargas trying to drop a level. Double leg. He might get this. Vargas might get this takedown. He picks him up, and he does. Good double leg takedown. 
Miller, though, right back up immediately. But that may have been enough to secure or steal the round for Fernando Vargas. Yeah, those, in two minutes, one or two really big moves can win you the round, especially when they're doing a lot of clinch work up against the cage where there's no definitive action, definitive damage given to either fighter. Right, when it's that close of a round and somebody does something as dynamic as a slam or a double leg takedown, that could be the ooh and ah, 4th of July factor that steals it in the eye of the judges, or eyes of the judges. Unless, of course, it's being judged by Cyclops, then it would be eye of the judge. Three judges, six eyes. We'll see how they score. More Bama USA bad beat coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back, folks, to the Commerce Casino for Bad Beat 2. Somebody has to find the way to pass the other one on the scorecards or finish the fight. Yeah, it's a close fight, but I would give round number one to Miller, round number two to Vargas. I'm not sure how the judges would score because they're that close, but let's say, but I can tell you one thing, this third round matters a lot. Yeah, this is a pivotal round because it could either be uh, one round each or it could be one... One guy winning both rounds, but I would put my money on the first scenario. It could be split so far. More striking in this round so far here in the third. Vargas doesn't really want to. No, Ducks down under those strikes, gets it a body lock. <laughs> he hooked the land shots and then fade out of them. Ticking down to the final minute of the fight. Miller against the cage. The caveman... From SoCal Fight Factory taking on subfighter MMA's Fernando Vargas in the blue. And Miller, is, that may be where he's stealing the fight. When they're in any of these positions in the clinch where you said a lot of, there's not a lot of dominant action happening, like a metronome, his hands are just striking the other guy. Yeah, Vargas is going for takedowns. Miller is nullifying those takedown attempts and punishing him while you're doing it. You never want to just defend a move. You want to defend and counterattack, keep your opponent on his heels, and that's what Miller was doing right there. Yeah, Miller is really, he's, he's throwing his hands. Anytime they are tied up, he's finding one free hand, and he's launching it. Kick to the midsection now by Miller. Vargas with a quasi-Superman punch right there. Good right hand by Vargas landed. That doesn't really phase Miller, though. It wasn't that clean, but it did connect. It was a grazing shot. I think if it would have connected clean, if Miller's a little closer, that might have been damaging. Because it was on target. It was just short of the target. Ten seconds left in this fight. Once again, we find Vargas in the clinch, pushing, pushing Miller against the cage. And watch, as soon as Miller has a free hand, if there's time, boom, see him throwing some strikes? Right there. That could be where he's winning the fight. Reading between the lines, Miller may have punched his way just a little bit ahead with some of those little shots. Here's Vargas' takedown. Good one. Right up against the cage. They spent a lot of time in the clinch where things were close, where nobody was decisively in control. But during those moments, Miller found a way to free up a hand and just pummel and pummel and pound on the body of Vargas. Yeah, I'm tempted to score a couple draws here in these rounds. The only thing making me not want to do it is some of those shots like you said by Miller. Well, the main thing we want to do is we want to get to the point, and that is the decision. Marco Rodriguez has that information. Let's find out where this fight ends up. A congratulatory hug by Fernando Vargas. Joshua, the caveman Miller, with that hand, again, in the clinches, may have, not to use a caveman cliche, pummeled and pounded and clubbed his way to a victory on the scorecard. Mixed martial arts so tough, even a caveman can do it. More action coming up here at Bad Feet 2, live from the Commerce Casino. Stay with us. We'll stay with you. That's how relationships work. We'll be right back.